Modern Warfare 2 has been a massive success so far. Granted, the community has been mixed on the multiplayer, but the campaign is solid. The game has enjoyed the largest launch in franchise history, which is pretty incredible when you consider how much of an achievement that actually is. The uh, Gunsmith's refining has been pretty interesting, and while the system isn't quite as game-changing as the 2019 version, it's pretty insane. It is as a custom or customization tool. It's got some pretty insane weapon kits, and people have been asking for this. So today... We're going to check out 10 of the most insane Modern Warfare 2 gunsmith builds discovered so far. Now be sure to give all these a try. Keep in mind that the amount of patches and updates this game is going to get over the next couple years, this list is going to change rapidly. This is November 2022. These are some of the best guns you can possibly use, so try them out before Infinity War notice and hits them with the Nerf hammer. At number 10 today is the Lockwood 300 with the Point G3P04 laser sight the Cronin Groove Shot Underbarrel, that's a cool name, the Seiken DB-107 Muzzle, the 7.11mm Matsuic Barrel, and the Bryson Natural Series Handguard. Let's start off the list with a gun that I admittedly slept on when the game launched. The Lockwood is basically this game's version of the 7.25 Shotty. Now, it's not quite as busted as that gun, uh, but it's far and away the best shotgun in the game right now, and a lot of people are starting to figure out how good it can be. It is a bit tough to get the hang of, but once you figure out the handling and the kill ranges, it can be one of the best guns in the game for aggressive players and people who like to swoop in and out of cover. There's a certain way you have to play with the Lockwood, but if you figure it out, this build will probably treat you very well. Next up is the Castoff 762, and we're going to put the Kostovia, of course, DX90 on it, the 7x62 high velocity ammunition, the Ivanov ST70 rear grip, the FTAC Ripper 56 underbarrel, and your choice of optic. I really don't know why Infinity Ward insisted on making up new names for everything in Modern Warfare 2, but the cast-off is the AK-47 to anybody who, who's played the game. You've probably heard a lot of good things about the AK so far in the game cycle, and at the time of this video's recording, it hasn't been nerfed, so it's still a very high-tier pick for multiplayer. The damage range on the cast-off is pretty insane, and that's what gives it great versatility. This build is one you've probably seen a number of times online already. It's going to help you take full advantage of the power and the range, while also boosting your movement and recoil control. If you stick to mid-range, this build will keep you at the top of the scoreboard and let you experience one of the best AK-47s in COD history. At number 8 today is the SBR-208 with the Cronin Mini Pro Optic, the ZRL-T70 pad extension, the Polar Fire S muzzle, the Aim Assist 406 comb, and the 22.5 inch Elevate 11 barrel. Let's do some sniper love here. The SBR was a fan favorite in the last game, and it's rapidly becoming one of the most popular guns in Modern Warfare 2. Heck, this thing could give the classic intervention some stiff competition for quickscoping, and I'm sure it's going to get a ton of usage in Warzone 2 as well, especially after its older brother was such a hit with the community. This build is meant to capitalize on the SPR speed potential without punishing your one-shot kill range, but you're going to have to get used to sniping with a red dot instead of a full scope. If you're quickscoping and playing aggressive, this will work fine, but if you're engaging at longer ranges or doing some traditional sniping, uh, you just may need to know how to lead your shot a little better. At number 7 today is the SPX-80. We are going to attach the FSS ST-87 bolt, the FSS oh, I don't even know how, OVV laser sight, the PVZ-890 tack stock, so many numbers, the Schlager match rear grip, and the 16-inch Executioner 80 barrel. Now, the SPR may be where you started. The SPX is where you're going to end up. It's basically a better SPR all the way around, and while the original has a fan club, I don't think it's going to last much longer, especially after the meta evolves and becomes more commonplace. The SPX-80, it's a fantastic rifle, and this build will give you the best of both worlds. Now, that SPR loadout was pretty tailored to quickscoping. The SPX build will treat you very nicely for up close or from afar, so kit it out and give it a try. Moving right along, we have the M4. We are going to equip it with the FTAC Castle Comp Muzzle, the FSS Shark Fin 90 Underbarrel, the High Tower 20 inch barrel, the Ravage 8 stock, and the Saken ZX grip. Now, the M4 is by far one of the most popular guns in the game already, but I don't think it's quite as good as we initially thought. It's still a top tier assault rifle. Thanks to the high rate of fire and the controllable recoil, it's one of the easiest guns in the game to pop off with, and its versatility is some of the best in the game. So, with this build, you'll be able to recoil or control that recoil, keep it down to a minimum, while also giving yourself a bit more of a competitive edge at longer ranges. Up close to mid, it rips. I mean, it does on its own, but these attachments, you'll be able to give yourself a little added versatility of long-range competition. We didn't put an optic on this one because the iron sights are already so clean, but if you wanted to, you could swap the Ravage 8 stock for an optic. At number five today is the RAAL, the RAL MG. We are going to put the BVM-338 muzzle, the 50-round belt mag, 
the FSS Ole V laser sight, the Bruin Q900 rear grip, and you get to pick the optic. Back when the game came out, I said this gun was one of the worst guns in the game. Now, in my uh, defense, most of the community already wrote it off when it first came out because of how clunky and awkward it was. But once people figured out that two-shot build, well, yeah, all that went out the window. Since then, it's been a very popular pick in multiplayer, and this build still hasn't really been patched, so it's as good as ever. If you want to stick to mid-range combat with this class, simply because the poor handling and relatively slow close-range time to kill compared to SMGs, but if you hit your shots and keep enemies away, it's insane. I've seen people dropping 90-plus kills with this build like it's nothing, so I apologize for sleeping on it when Modern Warfare 2 came out, but the gunsmith tinkering did its job. At number four today is the Castoff 7-4U. We are going to kit it out with the FTAC Castle Comp Muzzle, the VX Pineapple Underbarrel, the Spetsnaz S10 Stock, the Short Tack 300mm Barrel, and the Cronin Mini Red Dot Sight. It wasn't enough for Infinity War to rename the AK-47. They also had to make the 7-4U into an assault rifle. I don't know why, but they did. I really don't know why this weapon's in the AR class because it belongs in SMG, but regardless, it's a monster. A lot of people actually think the 7-4U is better than the standard 47 rifle. I'll, I'll let you guys debate in the comments. If you prefer mid-range and longer, you probably like the cast off. If you want more mobile assault rifle feel, the 7-4U is the perfect choice. This build is meant to make the 7-4U much faster, making it function more like its COD 4 counterpart, which I'm a big fan of. So if you want a beefy rifle that functions more like an SMG, give this build a try. At number three today, the Fennec with the X10 RR40 muzzle, the VLK LXR 7 milliwatt laser sight, the FSS Sharkfin 90 underbarrel, the Fennec Mag 45 magazine, and you get to pick the optic. The Fennec was introduced to Modern Warfare as DLC, but it launched with the sequel. Many people compare it to the iconic Vector. There are some similarities. For all intents and purposes, the Fennec is the new universe's version of the Chris Vector, and it's thankfully much better in this game than it was last time around. The 2019 Vector wasn't awful, but it had drawbacks, many of which have been adjusted for Modern Warfare 2. By running this SMG with the listed attachments, you'll have a great time to kill. You'll have good mobility, a slight buff to recoil control, help you get your shots on target. The optic attachment will also replace the arguably awful iron sights for situations where you want to ADS and track somebody. This build is meant to give slight buffs while still maintaining mobility. I think it's a great middle ground for this gun. At number two today, the Lockman Sub. We are going to attach the X10 Razor Comp Muzzle, the VX Pineapple Vert Grip Underbarrel, the No Stock Stock Attachment, the L38 Falcon 226mm barrel, and either an optic or an extended mag. Is the MP5 ever not going to be amazing? I don't know. It seems like every time the COD devs decide to add another MP5 to the franchise, it ends up being top tier with the exception of Modern Warfare 3. I don't know what happened there. Now, the MP5 may be called the Lockman Sub, but it's still the MP5, and it's an excellent weapon. A lot of people put it right there at the top. By using these attachments, you'll basically have the 2019 MP5 all over again. Some have compared the Lockman to the Black Ops Cold War MP5 more than the 2019. I get it. It's a bit bulkier and beefier than the 19 version, but ultimately, the playstyle is the same as the last Modern Warfare game. You run around, get in people's faces. Every once in a while, you challenge at mid-range. You know how the MP5 plays now. The only thing I left up to you in the build was a choice between an optic and a mag. Some people hate the Lockman sub's iron sight, so if you find yourself challenging at mid-range more often than not, throw a red dawn on. However, if you're comfortable with the irons, stick to more aggressive style, go with an extended mag. And at number one today, the FSS Hurricane. We're going to put the Seiken ZX rear grip, the VX Pineapple Vert underbarrel, the uh, Sten Razor Comp, the FSS Cannon Made 16-inch barrel, and the FSS Hurricane receiver. According to many in the community, the FSS Hurricane is the best gun in the game. And the fact that it's been so powerful since the beta, that says something. Hopefully this doesn't turn into another 2019 M4 situation where it never gets nerfed and it just stays at the top. Until then, feel free to abuse this class that a lot of people have been spamming for easy streaks and XP. Now the attachments, they'll carry a competitive uh, theme to it. The kill, the mid-range engagements, makes it a force to be reckoned with with tanks to the already great rate of fire. I mean, the grips will keep recoil under control and that barrel will also increase the bullet velocity so you don't have to lead your shots nearly as much. This build is nutty. I'm honestly surprised Infinity Ward hasn't done much nerfing yet, except some changes probably in the near future. And there you have it. So those are some of the best gunsmith builds right now in Modern Warfare 2. If you want us to continue to do this every time something switches, let me know. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you soon.